Holy Underwear, we've got more breaking news, if you can believe it. And this time it's from the Senate floor. The Senate just voted to take the first step to avoid a government shutdown. Again, for like the 70th time in four years. And they were able to do it because West Virginia Democrat Senator Joe Manchin, that's fun, decided to withdraw his controversial uh, and divisive energy proposal at the 11th hour. But still, Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer tried to blame it all on Republicans. Chuckles? Now, Senate Republicans have made very clear they will block legislation to fund the government if it includes bipartisan permitting reform because they've chosen to obstruct instead of work in a bipartisan way to achieve you know what people are sick of? Blah, blah, blah. Lawmakers on both sides of the aisle opposed Manchin's provision, including liberal darlings, Bernie Sanders and Tim Kaine. They're going to do a buddy cop movie. So does Schumer have any control over his caucus? <laughs> I'm so mature. Why do we keep getting to the last minute of the shutdowns? Let's meet tonight's magnificent man panel. We've got former Trump advisory board member and hoteling risk advisors managing director Jason Meister is back. And the host of the aggressive progressive podcast, former aide to aforementioned Senator Chuck Schumer, Christopher Hahn is back. And he is getting ready to be owned by 2020 libertarian vice presidential candidate and chair <laughs> of youarethepower.net. Spy Cohen with a winking eagle. And yes, that is the euphemism. Gentlemen, welcome to you all. Um, so <laughs> I, I remember it was just a few months ago, Jason, when Joe Manchin was beloved by Republicans and Democrats. <laughs> he was the most sought after bell at the ball and everyone wanted to punch his dance card. Now do they want to punch him in his proverbial face? Not literally. Yeah, Kennedy, I, I'm, I'm pretty disappointed in Manchin. I mean... I was looking forward to a government shutdown until 2024. Uh, mm -hmm. But look, his, his bill, his yeah. permitting bill, uh, uh, effectively social, would have socialized uh, the cost of renewable energies and essentially give the federal government the power to force green energy transition onto the states, making the states pay for it. And effectively, uh, with solar and wind, which are not reliable, sources of energy. So the result of this bill would have to, been to create less reliable and secure energy, which is exact opposite of Manchin's uh, stated goal. Mm. So I think, look, at the end of the day, the, the last thing the U.S. needs right now is a Manchin bill that would only compound the, the, the harms created by the Inflation Reduction Act. Yeah, I don't know that centralized transmission lines are the very best thing for the country. Uh, I'm glad to see this mm not go through. I'm sympathetic with Joe Manchin because he's got a lot of people in his state, Chris, who still very much rely on traditional forms of energy production, uh, especially coal. But does this entire process damage Manchin? Because Republicans liked him because he was obstructing Democrats, and Democrats loved him because he helped pass the Inflation Reduction Act, which even John Kerry said is inappropriately named, and uh, this little poison pill didn't work out in his favor. Is he damaged? Well, it clearly wasn't a poison pill. They passed the Inflation Reduction Act, right? He got to bring up the bill that he wanted to bring up today. It got taken out of uh, the that budget the right now pill. so that yes. we didn't have a shutdown. So here's the thing. Republicans... The politics never works for them in a government shutdown. They always get blamed, no matter whose fault it is, because the American people know that they want to shut down the government. Now, I know my friend Spike wants no more government, so he'll probably go on about oh, that in a few seconds. Oh, I love when you put words in other people's mouths. That. That's but, very sophisticated. <laughs> but, but, <laughs> let's be, but let's be clear. The politics of this is very, very simple. We are five weeks away from an election. Control of the Senate, control of the House is at stake. Nobody on either side wants a government shutdown, but it is particularly bad for Republican candidates, particularly Senate candidates, going into the midterm elections. I'm, I'm very glad to see you so concerned about Republican candidates. That's, that's very chivalrous of you. Uh, Chris, now, Spike, would you like to respond to his critique of your entire worldview that he oversimplified in a half a sentence? 
Well, I mean, I will say this. I mean, any organization that has to govern from one crisis to the next uh, cannot put forward an actual budget and has to wait till moments before they're going to shut down to hurry through some new bill that's going to spend money none of us have and run up inflation even more. Uh, yeah, I mean, we should be taking a look at whether or not we even want them to be open. And this is actually a perfect example of that. Uh, we do need more energy permitting. We're seeing how, as a result of the fact that we can no longer buy uh, fossil fuel needs from one dictatorial regime in Russia. We're having to go hat in hand to other dictatorial regimes like in Venezuela and in uh, Saudi Arabia and Iran to try to get more oil from them. I think that we should be drilling more here. Uh, we should also acknowledge the fact that particularly wind energy, but these so-called renewables are neither renewable nor uh, climate or uh, uh, environmentally friendly. They are uh, heavily reliant on resources just to extract everything needed to build them. They're heavily reliant on uh, weather patterns. And frankly, we need to be looking not just at expanding fossil fuel development, but on also getting rid of all of the ridiculous regulations that have made it cost prohibitive to build a new nuclear plant Amen. in the U.S. in over 50 years now. And frankly, I'm not sure any of that will happen until the government shuts down for good. Well, if you really want a cheap, clean, <laughs> efficient, renewable energy, you will listen to Spike and you will expand the mm. nuclear option, especially for Americans who need it most, who are well, truly hurt, hurting right now. And Spike, you're absolutely right. The, uh, the IRA energy. does that. Okay, the IRA, uh, no, it doesn't. The IRA gives nuclear credits, credits for building new nuclear in the Inflation Reduction Act. They help keep nuclear there, plants how, open through that but act. But the existing regulatory so regime clear. makes it cost prohibitive. That's the problem. It's not that they are, don't have enough money to do it. It's that it's cost prohibitive with the regulatory burdens that were not so, addressed. So you want to tell no, 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 really no, nilly is, nuclear plants? No, you don't want any is, guidance on nuclear? Want to have another Fukushima here? I don't think the, so. The, 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 regulator, the regulatory burdens are so high, there has been zero built in 50 plus years. That's that's a, a regulatory burden that's too high. All right. It's that, too damn that's high. That's a citing burden that needs to be rectified. I agree. I agree. We need to cite more nuclear, rectified. but that's a citing burden more than a regulatory okay, burden. We, we have to work on it. Okay, we do, and we're going to work on that while we're all holding hands and playing a nice ukulele together.